Right, let's begin with our first big story. The federal government in 2009 under late President Omar Musa Gheradoua initiated the amnesty program to end restiveness of militants in the Niger Delta region. All persons who directly or indirectly participated in any form of militant activity in the Niger Delta was granted amnesty and unconditional pardon uh, to end the crisis in the region at the time. Militants were encouraged to surrender their arms and ammunition as their activities greatly affected the nation's revenue, which largely comes from crude oil exploration. Now, the amnesty program saw the integration of not less than 30,000 youths under the 2009 amnesty agreement signed by the militants and the government, a monthly stipend of 65,000 naira was to be given to each ex-militant and that is three times higher than the minimum wage and they were also to get vocational training while others were sent to schools both within and outside the country. The amnesty program was carried out successfully under late President Yeradwa and after his demise, uh, the program continued unhindered under the former president, Good Luck Jonathan. After the amnesty program was introduced, uh, there was a drastic drop in militancy in the region until recently when the Niger Delta Avengers, also known as NDA, and other armed groups launched attacks on all installations. Now, coincidentally, government stopped the monthly payments uh, to militants in February, resulting in the militants accusing it of breaching a deal negotiated in 2009. Let's listen to this report. The emergence of a group known as the Niger Delta Avengers earlier this year has shattered the hitherto peace enjoyed since 2009 when the Nigerian government granted amnesty to militants agitating for development of the Niger Delta region. The frontal attack tactics adopted by the Avengers has inflicted what is seen as collateral damages on oil production and exploration, which is the country's main income earner. The Avengers say they are out to completely decimate Nigeria's oil industry unless the government akins to its demand, including a greater share of Nigeria's oil wealth for Niger Deltans and cleanup of areas blighted by oil spills. The federal government has called for a truce and requested for negotiations with the Niger Delta Avengers. The Ijo National Congress, a group formed essentially to draw attention of the government to the plight of the people living in riverine communities in the Niger Delta wants government to involve them in the negotiations. The Nigerian government will only implement its own side. On the side of the militants, they also will allow repairs, immediate repairs. In fact, if the INC is on board, we will certainly call for a three month period for which the dialogue has to take place. All issues must be addressed. Other members of the group want the Nigerian government to pay more attention to the development of the oil producing area. The president might be sincere, but you know, uh, the advisors and those around him, they think otherwise. There is an opportunity to be very close to the uh, president. Despite the sharp fall in the price of crude oil in the international market, oil remains the biggest revenue earner to the Nigerian government. Ayodilio Zubaku, TVC News, Lagos. Mm. All right, and now the federal government has resumed monthly cash payment to each beneficiary under the amnesty program. The Central Bank of Nigeria, the CBN, now directly pays the 65,000 Naira stipend into the bank accounts of the ex-militants to eliminate cases of fraud and shortchanging by their leaders. According to the coordinator of the presidential amnesty program, Brigadier General Paul Boro retired. Over the past five years, the program has secured admission for and given scholarships to 5,234 uh, beneficiaries in tertiary institutions. Now, the federal government through the CBN is working to clear all outstanding payments for the ex-militants. Mm. All right, joining us now in the studio uh, is the Niger Delta rights activist, Presidor Gomorai. He's someone uh, who I may call a Nigerian without border. He you actually almost, describes he himself, describes himself as, as Nigerian without You know, having border. the Niger Delta blood, born in the north, mm. raised in the west, 
and travel to the east. <laughs> Good morning. That's exactly how I describe mm. myself too. It's great. Yes. It's, it, exactly. Yes. From the east, and then you were mm -hmm. you grew Ethnic in the mother, north. Ibo father. It's wonderful. Yoruba pure son. Nigeria. Absolutely. Oh, pure Nigeria. Yes. You're welcome to the <laughs> Good program to have this you morning. on the show. Thank you. Good morning. Right now, the let's 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 begin this way. I, I, yeah, B besides, besides you, we also have mm -hmm. joining us from our Port Harcourt studio, the president of the Niger Delta Nonviolent Youth Assembly, Comrade Kennedy Tonyo West. Kennedy, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, Nigerians. You're welcome. I was almost forgetting he was there, but <laughs> no. no, please, uh, We're thanks not for going joining to us. Do that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let, let me come to you, uh, Presido. The issue of the amnesty, let, let, I want to take it from there before we come to mm. where we are right now. Mm. The issue of the amnesty at that time was brought up, it was meant to silence, it was meant to resolve all the agitation from the militants, apart from paying them, there were other conditions and all of that. Now, from this standpoint, looking backwards, it looks like from the agitation we hear now, it looks like it is more of what we can get mm. than what can be done for our people no, no, on ground. Uh, but, what but what the, do you have to say the about The truth that? has to be told. Mm. The truth. Yeah. Amnesty was only given to those who carry arms against the state. But the key issue is not development of the Niger Delta. It should be addressed. Agreed, intervention agencies were set up. But if you look at the history, from the development boards of the early 60s to Umpadek, I mean, yes, Umpadek, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you see, it never met the aspiration of the people, and facts are there, never show any sign on ground. Rather, what we find is people, privileged people, hooked up to the program, and then stories are being told, and that's why these boys took arms. So, first, they were asked to drop their arms and be settled with the amnesty program. Mm -hmm. Why government you expect to accelerate the development in that part of the country. Don't forget, there are issues that need to be really revealed. One kilometer road in the Niger Delta is about 10 or 5 or 6 somewhere elsewhere in Nigeria. So what we're saying, you need more concentration. Agreed. You had, let's forget about Ompadek, NDDC, because it came in Niger Delta Development Commission. Sincerely, let us accept, what's the budget? And when it's even given, the, the funds released to the commission, Except you don't want to be realistic. If you ask present acting MD, she will tell you so much is yet to come from co government covers to the commission to pick up programs. Mm. They have a budget. And those are the things. So when you say amnesty, most people just believe, believe in the, the, those who picked up arms against states and have given amnesty. Even the language itself, some of us challenge. Amnesty is given to people who are found guilty by a competent court of jurisdiction. I'm not a lawyer. But you call people who had grievances with state, over state not taking care of them. You call, you give them amnesty. Let's take it in the good frame. Good. They drop arms. They are supposed to be given certain training. Over About 5,000 or so of them? More out, of 30, mm. out of 30,000. Out of 30,000. And we, we will not deny the fact that there was, rest, there was peace. Within the period, the oil business was going on. People were lifting. One, you look at the grievances. I don't support the, the, the modus operandi of uh, Avengers mm -hmm. in terms of bombing or blowing pipelines. But look at issues raised. Jamin. Jamin. What we're saying is Nigerians you appreciate. The only luck Nigerians have, seriously, is because there's this. I always make reference to I, I can't remember the musician. Is it Mary Venoga or so? She sang a song. Veno one, Marioga. Marioga. Mm. We move one kilometer, you meet another language. That mm. actually had this destabilize the Niger Delta. And it gives opportunity to people who now use the term I call divide and conquer. Is that <laughs> at the root of the Niger Delta yes. problem? So that all the interventions that government over the years have put in place have not worked. They work, but uh, not uh, to the... On this program, yes. we have established with different guests, yes. uh, you know, uh, like yourself, the issue of, you know, the palliatives and all of that uh, that have been put in place to solve. The, the basket case that is the, the Niger Delta um, problem. Now, going forward, this president, this government, yes. you know, has put a few moves in place. Yes. As a matter of fact, the president himself actually said, I think late June, that he would personally 
uh, visit to the governors of the Niger Delta, Good. you know, the, the leaders and the elders and all of that. Yes. Will this be the master stroke no, that will he, end this crisis if he does once that, and for all? Beautiful. If he does that, they are listening people. Mm. Well articulate. I don't need to mention names. You, you, you know, we have colors of all in the Niger Delta, just like you have in Nigeria. They are listening people. If you take appropriate steps and address issues frontally, sometimes we challenge, we query all these intervention agencies, NDDC, OMPADEC. Why can't the Ministry of Works accelerate development in the Niger Delta? You just mobilize Julius Beja, Arab contractors. Sorry, I'm calling companies, you know, yeah, Arab, Arab contractors. Mm. JK Kappa, let them go there. Like we have, you see, we are. But what you have going on in the Niger Delta now is almost like the Marshall Plan, you know, and that is why but, government but, set aside specific agencies to tackle the Niger but the, Delta. But well, I just problem. told you, we're, they're lacking. Mm. Before now, let's let's look at the Niger Delta. In terms of sports, f don't forget it. Even mm. Lagos was making the mark in swimming. They are all from Niger Delta. Indeed. The buses. In football, in wrestling, we're not saying we are better than the rest, but Niger Delta is a hub of Nigeria. You have people from the north, the Esako area, the Galas, you have Yorubas in Niger Delta, you have Igbos in Niger Delta. So it's a miniature Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And then if you have this development in, in, in intervention agencies, like you rightly said, our palliatives are given, how well are they being nurtured? to the appropriate persons. Okay, Let, let's bring so, in uh, uh, Kennedy here in our Port mm -hmm. Harcourt studio. Kennedy, uh, you've been listening to our discussion. We've been talking about the different palliative measures by federal government over the years. We've had the Niger Delta Development Commission, the Niger Delta Ministry, 13% derivation, and all of that, all of these. Now, uh, 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 Presidor in the studio has said that certainly some of the budgets of these agencies don't come as at when due and sometimes even the amounts meant for them are not given but let us let us also see from the other perspective niger deltans have representatives in federal government they have senators they have house of rep members when these monies are decided to be given and when they're not given as at when due you have representatives from the niger delta so we expect that one way or the other, the right questions will be asked to the right quarters and to the right persons from the Niger Delta, and that doesn't seem to be so. What's your take on this? I think the proliferation of interventionist agency has to, has to be addressed. Because if you, if you look at, if you look at the various interventionist agency, NDDC, for instance, you know, and then you brought the Ministry of Niger Delta. Where is the where is the role of what's the role of the Ministry of Niger Delta and the, Minister, the Niger Delta Development Commission? How do you separate their functions? If the Ministry of Niger Delta does not have tangible functions, then why don't you scrap the Ministry of Niger Delta and let the Ministry of Works take over? the function of the Ministry of Niger Delta, and then the projects become an holistic program. Then the NDDC, the NDDC and the Niger Delta Development Basin Authority take over these two jobs because the Niger Delta Basin Development Authority and the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, both can concentrate in the interland, both can concentrate in the communities, so for me, I think that the establishment of the Niger Delta Ministry is it, it's not in conformity with what ought to be in the place. Now, let us also understand that the Ledu Meter Report, which gave rise to the amnesty program, also advised on several committees on education, Mm -hmm. on environmental uh, uh, degradation, trying to look at how to mitigate those issues that are affected by environmental hazards, and then infrastructure and sports and, to, and so on. But those committees had a stillbat, had a stillbat. Now, I think that part of the things that the federal government should do is to don't stop the Ledo Meter Committee, look at it thoroughly, look at it thoroughly and then implement those ones that are in tandem with reality the present reality mm. 
because if you let's let's face fact, the little meter report, they took the amnesty out of it, and the amnesty actually worked. Let us also understand something here. The amnesty granted to the Niger Delta was that freedom fighters, agitators, why don't you drop your weapons and let the federal government mobilize to sites? That means that the Niger Delta becomes a construction site. The, the military leaders, on their own volition, dropped their weapons in order to give federal government the chance to do what they have said. All right, Kennedy, let me but come in here. Uh, let me just jump that. in here uh, very quickly. You used uh, the word proliferation, and I, 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 I'm just uh, thinking, are you saying then that there are just too many agencies to tackle the problem of the Niger Delta and they're overlapping and there seems and to be no... Purposes, yeah, maybe. working, you know, totally... And not in in tandem. But now, government, as at first of August, uh, you know, resumed payments to this ex-militants to stop them from, you know, their planned strike. They were going to actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, go on strike on the first of August. How sustainable do you think this whole, you know, a uh, payment of cash to ex-militants is? Is this the realistic way to go? Well, it is a better thing to do, but even even at that, there is still a faulty. It's still a faulty process. Why is it a faulty process? The verification, the verification was done only in River State. It was not done in other states. So, how will the other states, who have not been able to, you know, align with the verification, how would they feel? Because I remember vividly that they went to River State, the Amnesty team went to River State and decided to yank off all those people who they felt came through the back door or whose names are not on the payment list. As the Amnesty Office also informed the general public on the number of people that came in through the back door and then how many are on their payment list right now. They were not transparent. Yes, it is a fine, it is a fine process, but how many people were yanked out? How many people are the federal government paying presently? How many people, how many beneficiaries will the CBN pay directly to their account? The verification that was done in River State, was it done in Bayasa State or in Delta State? The answer is no. So for me, I think that the issue of bringing in CBN is a fine one, is a noble one, but what is good for the goose is good for the ganja. So therefore, they have to follow it across board. Try other states to do the verification, but that is just part of it. The problem with the Niger Delta it doesn't end on the payment of stipends alone. We said it over and over again. The federal government in 2009 came up and pleaded with the agitators and said, please, stop the bombing, stop kidnapping, stop the destruction of oil and gas facilities. We know that we have not treated this region fairly. Let us begin to see what we can do. The Lado Mite Committee was inaugurated to basically gather up all the various recommendations right from the Willing Commission and then come up with a clear court direction, recommendation on what the government should do to bring these issues to a reasonable end. All right, uh, just and hold on for us. Uh, uh, Kennedy, Tonyo West, and of course our guests are here in the studio. Let's delve in further into this. Uh, criticisms have been trailing the activities of these parastatals and what they have been doing with the allocations that they received from the federal government. In 2010, a budget of 240 billion naira was approved for the Niger Delta Development Commission. President Goodluck Jonathan made a proposal of 236 billion naira for the commission, but the National Assembly decided to increase the budget to 4 billion naira. Now, in 2011, President Jonathan presented a 249.5 uh, billion 
NARA of NND NDDC budget proposal to National Assembly for approval. But the National Assembly passed a budget of 261 billion NARA, a figure also higher than that proposed by the President. And the budget has 243.54 billion NARA for development expenditure, 9.48 billion NARA for personnel expenditure, 7. Point, uh, about 7 billion naira for recurrent expenditure and 877 million naira for non-capital expenditure. Now this particular budget was the source of much controversy as allegations of fund diversion trailed some politicians and some top officials of the NDDC at that time. It was reported then that advance payment guarantee APGs contract files went missing. The National Assembly in 2012 approved for NDDC a budget of sum of 250 billion naira for the year. The approved budget comprised personnel expenditure of 10.2 billion naira, overhead expenditure of 7.5 billion naira, capital expenditure of 1.01 billion, as well as projects development in parentheses expenditure of 232.05 billion naira. And for 2013, the National Assembly approved the sum of 315.8 billion naira as the budget of the Niger Delta Development Commission. And the lawmakers approved 14.9 billion naira for personal expenditure and 9 billion for overhead costs, while the totally estimated capital expenditure is put at 2.4 billion and 289.5 billion naira as for project uh, development expenditure. Uh, yes, of course, we will indeed continue to reel out these figures that are almost mind-boggling. Our <laughs> guests actually believe that these figures are really just on paper. They're not, uh, you know, trickling down to the people that uh, these funds are meant for. But right now, we're going out on TVC Entertainment. But viewers there can continue with TVC Breakfast on TVC Nigeria, Concert Channel 190, DSTV 418. You can also watch that on GoTV 45 and ACTV 510. Right, thanks for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. If you're just joining us, uh, we have uh, we've been discussing the issues in the Niger Delta and agitations by militants in there. And we've been taking a look at the amnesty program up, to, up, to, up until now, looking at all the interventionist agencies in the Niger Delta, talking about NDDC, the Niger Delta Ministry, 13% derivation, as the case may be. We have all that and we have in the studio discussing with us, uh, Presido Gomorai. Uh, he is with us in our studio here. And we have Kennedy Tonyo West in our Port Harcourt studio talking about this gentleman. Now, if from 2011 until now, if you look at those figures and jiggle them together, that's almost about a trillion naira. NDDC. For NDDC yes. alone. Alone. Now, Niger Deltans are very aware of these amounts, whether they are given or they are not given, whether they are released or they are not released, but the monies have been approved because the money, the moment is approved, yes. it is part of the budget yes. already. Yes. Niger Deltans are aware. The, uh, members of the National Assembly from the Niger Delta who give approval, who give support to these, are all aware. Yes. We haven't really heard agitations. The difference the, on the differentials between what is given to it, what was approved and what, and what is given. That is where we, we want to hear the outcries from. But I just told you at my initial uh, contribution that that much could be approved for NDDC. Mm. But we all, we hear the MD, we have, uh, I think the MDs head the NDDCs that are acting, they always complain that what is supposed to come in has not come in in full. This has not been for once, all over the time. I can mention right from when uh, we had uh, Emmanuel Aguarivodo, we had the all, Timia Alaibi, the names I can remember. They had the same problems. And it's not peculiar to Niger Delta. It's general in Nigeria. It's, we cannot deny that fact. So those are the situations. And even you say NDDC, we expect NDDC, even with whatever program they have, to identify with communities that are really lacking. We must confess they've done well. With the little that we give, they've done well. There are communities today that have some civilization because of the activities of NDDC. I, I, I really remember some communities you can, you always go by boat or record, but today you could drive in. At least from Bomodi, you could drive into some communities that I know, same in rivers, in Akwaibon. Mm -hmm. But through this, 
the, the problem of the people, uh, why we are aggrieved is they should show complete sincerity of purpose in marching it out. We expect that by now, with what is happening in the country, we expect civilized construction firms drafted there, and like you said, and turn the Niger Delta to a construction yard. That alone will make the people, we are not fools, we will fight people like who challenge government activities if government is doing the right thing. Mm. Okay, so let's uh, bring in um, Kennedy, Tony West here. Last week, the military began fresh moves, uh, you know, to, well, <laughs> tackle the Niger Delta, you know, challenge in the event that peace moves uh, by the government um, actually fail. Uh, wh what's your take on the government's way of handling, uh, you know, this uh, process of bringing about peace in the Niger Delta right now? They are having a trouble. The federal government is having a trouble. At first, what triggered the adventures? What triggered this um, section? Let us understand that anything worth doing is worth doing well. In the early, in the late 90s, there was an agitation of resource control. It metamorphosed into, it gave birth to IYC, to Mosend, and then there was the, the massacre and then it looked like it stopped for a while and that resumed in 2003 up until 2007 and then 2009 President Yeradua came in and then during President Obas and Justino, he applied every tactics, every military tactics, it didn't work and it had lived his tenor and Yeradua came in and faced it frontally ensuring that he involved every party that ought to. And he was sincere. He was sincere about it. And then the amnesty came up. Amnesty, like I said, it's a miniature of the of whatever recommendation that has been made. Good, there was there was a reduction in violence. Federal government would have taken that That's opportunity, but probably event overtook it. And then we now have the present emergence of Avengers. How did the Avengers came? The Avengers or the violence resumed because of the aggressive and provocative manner in which the same federal government started the scene. We all recall that in May 29, 2015, in Mr. President's inaugural speech, it was just one paragraph that was made concerning the agitations in the Niger Delta. Mm -hmm. And all that was said in that inaugural speech was that the amnesty program is supposed to end by December. That was what happened. Not too long ago, our former president, President Olusha Gwabasajor, did say in a statement in Worry that the Niger Delta people are going to have some losses because of what they think is the mistake of their brother who was the leadership. Not just after then, the pipeline surveillance contracts that was given to leaders. Now, the, the, the issue is there are some lead, there are some people who because they did not believe in the federal government that did not take up the amnesty program because they doubt the sincerity of the federal government. Now, those set of people fell into the pipeline surveillance contract. And they were making a living from there, making the environment conducive, making business to thrive, living cooperatively with the IOCs. But when you came in, when the president came in, they immediately stopped it. And just at the verge of stopping the contract, you also said you're deploying the military to go and take over oil mm. facilities. It was a wrong approach. All right. It was um, a wrong approach. Now, not it just... So sorry, uh, that's where that's how much really we can take uh, from you there in, in Port Harcourt. Uh, Kennedy Tony West, uh, thank you so much uh, for your time and of course your input on the TVC breakfast uh, this morning. Uh, we still have uh, Presido Gomorai, a uh, Nigerian without borders, that's how he describes himself. Now let's really uh, look even further to this attempts to uh, you know bring about peace in the Niger Delta. That's really the the main reason why we're discussing this this morning yeah. now the 
United Delta Avengers, there's another splinter group, uh, so-called Reformed, Reformed NDA, yeah. and they've been reeling out all yeah, sorts see, of names, see, see, uh, you know, ways. as uh, sponsors yeah. of uh, the, um, you know, the Niger Delta Avengers yeah. that's causing uh, trouble right now. Should government really take them seriously? Well, uh, it's left for government. They have all the apparatus. They have intelligence mm -hmm. group to investigate. But the question you say is, average Niger Delta is not happy with the situation there. Mm -hmm. Whatever group, we all know the system. Since you're white, of what era? Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the situation, I, they, I challenge even Bayelsa, the APC members. No nominee for ambassador from Bayelsa. And now names have been mentioned. If you look at the, uh, the, the, the names mentioned so far, they are on the opposition party. Mm -hmm as the PDP party members mm -hmm. and, and then probably some other persons who were by chance not playing to the gallery of certain persons. That's the game plan and that's why I said if we are united in Niger Delta, Nigerians will respect us and will get what we deserve. But because we are not united, that concept I said divide and conquer needs to come in. And so it gives them to play out and want to ridicule names like the immediate past president who on his own in the history of this country or Africa called his opposing candidate and congratulating before even the results were announced. Right. You mentioned names like Tim Kinsley Kuku, who, if a step we don't want to be realistic, had used his influence and relationship with people to change a lot of young men in the Niger Delta. All right, Pastor Dog Omorai, thank you very much for coming on, on TVC Breakfast. We certainly look forward to better days ahead for the Niger Delta region and even Nigeria. Well, we wish us Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we also thank Kennedy Tonyo West for joining us earlier from Port Harcourt.